Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and welcome to the 177th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. So first of all, I just wanted to say that I have a lot to talk about as far as jailbreaking and iOS 7 is concerned. The other day on January 29th, in a surprise release, Apple issued iOS 7.0.5 for iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C models in China, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Now, I did create a separate video on the topic where I also went into depth on jailbreaking, so if you're interested in that, just be sure to check it out. I'll have a link to down below in the more info. So most of you who watch my videos will not receive the iOS 7.0.5 update simply because it's not available in the United States. It's available for non-US iPhones in other countries. Now at this point it's been confirmed that the vulnerabilities exploited by Evasion 7 have not been patched in iOS 7.0.5. However, with that said, the official version of Evasion 7 will not function on iOS 7.0.5 and it won't be able to jailbreak the firmware. So if you want to keep your jailbreak and if you want to maintain your jailbreak and you're in another country with the option to update to 7.0.5, just be sure to avoid it. Because although there is an unofficial version that has been modified to include support for 7.0.5, it was not released by the evaders, it's not official, and it's not 100% trusted, so again, avoid 7.0.5 and the unofficial edition of Evasion. Moreover, even Mouse Leonard, one of the key members of the Evaders, urged caution to users regarding 7.0.5 and future updates. Back to the firmware itself though, interestingly, iOS 7.0.5 appears to primarily correct a network provisioning complication for Chinese iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C devices. However, specific iPhone models, those with iPhone 5,4 and 6,2 identifiers, in other countries that are compatible with China's network will also display an update for 7.0.5. And although the new network provisioning update for other countries doesn't directly patch the Evasion 7 jailbreak, iOS 7.1 will. It's already been confirmed that the fourth beta that was recently released last week has closed at least one exploit that Evasion utilizes being the kernel exploit. So again, do not update to 7.1, whether it be a previous beta or 7.1 beta 4 because of course beta versions do expire forcing users to update. So eventually if you're on iOS 7.1 beta 3 or lower and you're jailbroken, it will expire and it will cause you to update to a version of 7.1 that does patch the Evasion 7 jailbreak and you will have unfortunately forfeited your jailbreak. So again, just to summarize, I cannot stress this enough because I guarantee I will get tons of questions when the time comes avoid 7.0.5 and especially 7.1 as it will indeed patch the Evasion 7 jailbreak. What's more, it looks like at the rate the evaders are currently working, there won't be another untethered jailbreak utility until after Apple releases iOS 8 and their next round of iDevices. So again, it's crucial to stay on 7.0.4 and lower at this point. If you're on an earlier version of iOS 7 and depending on when you're watching this video and what firmware is current at the time, I recommend up updating to 7.0.4 while you have the chance to jailbreak on the latest version that will be capable of being jailbroken via the official version of Evasion. All right, and with that out of the way, I wanted to discuss something I get asked on a daily basis. So referencing an article from Jailbreak iOS 7 Evasion the other night after presumably becoming frustrated by a constant barrage of questions, world-renowned hacker Muscle Nerd, again of the evaders, tackled the topic of bypassing iOS 7's activation lock on iOS 7.0.4. So besides evasion and jailbreaking, a vast number of individuals around the globe have been hopelessly searching for a viable method of bypassing Apple's anti-theft activation lock, which ties a device to its original Apple ID, a bond that cannot be severed unless the device is verified by logging into the original account. Now what everyone who asks me about bypassing iOS 7's activation lock need to understand is that while the evaders made it possible for the masses to jailbreak 7.0.4, the same can't and won't be said for bypassing a device's Apple ID or activation lock. Now, like I said before, the truth of the matter beyond the logistics of the situation is that it would be impossible to differentiate the thieves from those who actually obtained their iDevices through legitimate channels. Furthermore, as confirmed by MuscleNerd himself, it's virtually impossible to bypass iOS 7's new security measures because, quote, no matter how much you hack your iPhone, you can't erase Apple 
Apple ID association on Apple's servers. They'll chase it forever, futile. So what that basically means is that the vast majority of information and authentication measures are stored and managed remotely on Apple's iCloud servers, which is why a device cannot even restore via iTunes without first disabling the Find My iPhone feature inside the Settings app and logging into its original Apple ID. So in summary, while bypassing activation lock for all devices will never be possible, jailbreaking a device on Apple's latest public firmware currently is. So if you have yet to jailbreak, I highly recommend doing so as it will greatly improve the capabilities of your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. So I'll have a link to my in-depth tutorial using the Untethered Evasion 7 jailbreak down below. Just be sure to follow it again if you have yet to jailbreak. And speaking of jailbreaking, recently Sarik, the creator of Cydia and Substrate, released an updated version of Winterboard, the popular theming platform for iOS. So for those of you who opted to jailbreak 7.0.4 and install an earlier iteration of Winterboard, you may already be privy to what most would consider a major annoyance. So until recently, Winterboard users experienced a rather glaring caching issue that caused the status bar on iOS 7 through 7.0.4 to not display properly. So in order to obtain the latest version of Winterboard and fix annoying status bar caching issues, just be sure to open up City if you already have it installed, let it refresh, and download the latest update in the changes section. If you have yet to install Winterboard, you will get the latest version just by searching for and installing the package inside of Cydia. Next, I want to discuss a topic that I created a video on that I'll have linked to below. So once jailbroken, the insurmountable number of Cydia tweaks, modifications, extensions, add-ons, and packages can quickly become overwhelming. And in light of that glaring truth, again, I create a video on what could very well be your one-stop tweak install that covers all bases of iOS Springboard customization. So the tweak discussed in the video is dubbed Springtimize 3. Now for jailbreak veterans, Springtimize should ring a bell as it's long been renowned for offering true and complete customization for nearly every aspect of iOS. So beyond allowing the end user to alter animation times and dictate how many icons are displayed in the dock and on the pages in the columns and rows, Springtimize 3 also enables modifications for app slider, control center, folders, icons, the lock screen, and the status bar. There are literally thousands of different aesthetic combinations that users can enable, and it's almost a certainty that no two iPhones, iPads, or iPod touches with Springtimize 3 installed will look alike. Now, although I haven't even so much as talked to the developer, of Spring to My 3, let alone been approached to promote it, the package is quickly cementing its way into my list of must have tweaks. Moreover, in the video, again, that I have linked to below, I also discuss how to enable long lost animated boot logos on your device. So if you're at all interested in obtaining and fixing animated boot logos, as well as Spring to My 3 and the endless number of possibilities it brings to iDevices, just be sure to check it out. And like I mentioned earlier, beyond that video, I also created another one this week, again, discussing iOS 7.0. 0.5 and going more into depth on jailbreaking and the future. So as usual, both of those videos can be found below and on my channel. Next, last week I did discuss two things that I have been working on recently, the first of which being coverage on the Pebble smartwatch, both the original as well as Pebble Steel, which I just found out shipped on Friday. So I'm very excited to have some of the first consumer product ready coverage on the Pebble Steel smartwatch. Of course, just be sure to stay tuned for that as well as my upcoming Tesla Model S review video. Now I said I was going to try to get it out to you guys this week. However, unfortunately it doesn't look like that's going to happen because filming conditions haven't been optimal. So again, I am working on that. I've got a lot done for that, but I still have a ways to go. Of course though, I will keep you guys updated on both Facebook and Twitter. So if you're not following me or you don't have my page like, just be sure to do so. Now that pretty much wraps up everything I want to discuss in this week's episode. I will have some more general tech coverage for you guys on jailbreak tech info this coming week so just be sure to stay tuned for that as well as some other exciting coverage on my youtube channel which i just wanted to mention that i've had 600 videos publicly uploaded to youtube so that's very exciting and i definitely have more planned of course that i couldn't do it without you guys so i really appreciate it now, if you guys want a chance to enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card in this video, just be sure to rate it up and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. Also leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's been posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And if you don't know what to leave in the comment section, try answering the question of the day. And for this video, I think I'm going to make it once Apple releases iOS 7.1, effectively patching the Evasion 7 untethered jailbreak, 
Will you update to the firmware? If not, will you update to one of the beta versions of iOS 8 once Apple issues it come summertime? And if so, for that one, why? Just be sure to let me know down below or on Jailbreak Tech Info. And of course, if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and cover Jailbreak topics, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me on one of your circles inside of Google+, and follow me on Instagram at ICYD. Again, links to everything can be found down below. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.